here. This video is not for the squeamish. If you keep chickens like I do, then it's likely that from time to time one of them will become unwell and need your help. Maybe you'll be lucky and that will never happen to you, but I think it's a good idea to be prepared. Now, I'm not a qualified vet and I always suggest that you get qualified veterinary advice if you can, if it's available when you need it. But sometimes it's not available or it's not available in time. And then I think it's a good idea to know what you can do to help if you need to. So this is one of those videos to help you know what to do if you need to, to help your chickens. But I have to warn you that there are some graphic shots of the anatomy of the chicken's reproductive system and of the prolapse of the oviduct and what is needed to treat it. So if you're not keen on looking at that, and I can quite understand why you might not be, then I suggest you go and look at some of my prettier videos. There's some really nice one about some baby chickens falling asleep. They're so adorable. Okay, so you're still with me and ready to tackle the icky bits. Let's get started. Let's start with an overview of the reproductive system of your chicken. A female chick starts out with two ovaries, but only one of them, the left one, develops into a functioning ovary that produces eggs. The newly made egg, which at first is just a naked yolk, travels down the oviduct, along the way gathering albumin around the yolk, membranes around the albumin, and eventually the shell gets applied to the outside of the whole thing. Finally, the complete egg is laid through the opening called her vent. No, her vent is not a round hole like you might expect. It's a horizontal slit with dorsal and ventral lips. Go on, next time you're up close and personal with your chicken, have a look. So the hen has only one opening, and not only her egg, but also her poop comes out of the same opening. And yet she doesn't lay eggs all covered in a big pile of poop. So how does that work? Let's back up a bit from the vent. The little bit of anatomy just inside the vent is called the cloaca. And it's here that there's an intersection of the hen's reproductive tract that makes her eggs, her urinary tract, and her digestive tract. And just like a traffic intersection, it's controlled so that the eggs and poop don't go through the vent at the same time. It works like this. Most of the time, poop has right of way and travels from the large intestine through the cloaca and out of the vent. But once a day when her egg is ready to lay, the part of the cloaca where the egg is unfolds and covers the exit from the large intestine completely stopping the traffic from the digestive system, just like a stop sign across the pedestrian crossing. Then the egg can move down the vagina through the cloaca to the vent. What's more, the end of the vagina actually pushes out of the vent and turns itself a little bit inside out to deliver the pristine clean egg into the nest box. Then it retracts back into the cloaca and the vent closes again. So that's what's supposed to happen. But every now and again, something goes wrong and a section of the vagina stays outside of the vent. This is called a prolapse. And it happened recently to my hen called Agnes. The first sign that anything was wrong was that I noticed she had a rather poopy bum. This is often the case with a prolapse the prolapsed tissue interferes with the normal action of the vent. Then I spotted that telltale bit of pinkish red colour where none should be. Let's have a closer look at that. Yes, definitely, a bit of prolapsed tissue outside her vent. It's not a severe case by any means, but even a mild case like this one is unlikely to resolve on its own. So someone's going to need to help her out. 
and since I know what to do, that will be me. You can get a closer look here. There's a couple of inches of tissue dangling through her vent and a lot of poop everywhere. So first I'll clean off some of the poop. Agnes is pretty calm and doesn't object to being held firmly, so I'm able to do this on my own. I have her breast resting on my forearm and both legs held in my hand, and I can just tuck her tail under my arm so I can get a clear view. I'm just using warm water with some mild baby shampoo. But a lot of that poop has hardened around her feathers, so it's going to be easier if I just cut them off. Cutting a chicken's feathers doesn't hurt her any more than it hurts you to get your hair cut. The chicken you can hear squawking in the background isn't Agnes. So that's got a lot of the mess out of the way, so let me bring her a bit closer to the camera for you. You can clearly see what looks like a tube hanging out, but what you also want to check for is where the opening for the large intestine is. There you can see it clearly here, and that's where the poop needs to come through. And the opening right on the end of this prolapse is the oviduct. So I need to push all that tissue back inside where it belongs, but make sure that neither of those two passages gets twisted. There's no damage to any of the tissue, which is good. Sometimes the other chickens will peck at the prolapsed tissue. I guess it looks a bit like a piece of meat or something edible. And that can do a huge amount of damage, including of course bleeding from the wound, and even to the point where a great long length of oviduct and intestine is pulled right out of the poor hen. If that looks likely, you need to separate the hen from the others to protect her. But then reintroducing her can be problematic, so I just kept Agnes in with the others, with no trouble. So why does this happen? There are a few possible reasons. Prolapse can be more common in hens that started to lay at a very young age. It's also more common in overweight hens. If a hen is laying soft shelled eggs, then she may have to strain a bit more to lay each of those soft-shelled eggs, and that can provoke a prolapse. And it can be caused by an extra strain on laying that's brought about by the use of artificial lighting. Plus, having prolapsed before, means a hen is likely to do it again. That's true of Agnes. She had one two years ago, and although she's been fine in the meantime, it was always a possibility that it would happen to her again. Unfortunately, I think Agnes isn't very comfortable being dangled in front of the camera like this and every time I push it in, she pushes it back out again. So finally I decide to sit down again and give her a bit of support. And I also decide to be a bit more extreme with the hair cutting job. I'm using a very mild disinfectant just to minimise any risk of infection, 
but since none of the tissue is damaged, it's probably not necessary. Don't use any kind of oily substance or Vaseline, just plain water, or if you need a lubricant, then use a water-soluble one, like KY Jelly. If the tissue is very swollen and inflamed, some people use a hemorrhoid cream, but it's not really a good idea. Hemorrhoids are enlarged blood vessels, but a prolapse is not enlarged blood vessels. Hemorrhoid creams shrink the blood vessels, but you don't want to do that to the prolapsed tissue. Once it gets back into place, you want its blood supply to continue to work properly. Here the neighbour's dog barking probably disturbed her and you can see that when she struggles the pressure on her abdomen pushes the tissue completely out again. It's not uncommon for the hen to push the tissue out repeatedly, particularly because the muscles of the vent might have become a bit loose. So you just need to be patient and keep guiding it back in again until it stays there. I'm just working without gloves because I don't mind getting the odd bit of chicken poop on my hand, but you can wear gloves if you have them. And anyway, always make sure you wash your hands well after being near any chicken poop. Ah, I can feel that her abdomen is relaxing a bit. Yes, that looks good. Let's see if we can dry her off without provoking another push. Lovely. Now gently does it. That's a very successful few minutes. And I got her back in the chicken run with everything still in place. But, uh oh, she pushed it out again. Don't be discouraged if this happens to you. Just be patient and persistent. And eventually everything did stay in where it's supposed to be. And Agnes was as feisty as ever with Charlotte, who's below her on the pecking order. And a couple of weeks later, when I collected the eggs, along with the blue egg from Charlotte, was the typical teal green egg from Agnes. Yes, it does have a darker stripe round the middle. That egg is her first one after the prolapse, and maybe things were not quite back to normal. But Agnes seemed to be back to her happy self.
Let's hope she stays that way for a while.